Hello my friends and welcome, let's go for the latest update from Ukraine, let's start from the front lines. There Ukraine advances but slower than it was expected yesterday, so it was the huge artillery preparation the last night, but it seems that Ukraine still not moving the main resources to Verbova and Novoprokopovka. Nevertheless, there was the advancement, so it was yesterday and it is today, but it is not very significant as you able to see, Ukraine tried to get into Verbova village, but for now unsuccessfully, there are lots of the mines and Russia aimed their artillery towards this place. This image was spread throughout the Russian media saying that it was the Ukrainian convoy that advanced towards Verbova, but actually it's not true. Indeed, this is the Ukrainian convoy, but the image was taken from the north part of Robotina village long time ago. We've already discussed the situation with you on this channel, then this convoy was ambushed. I remember those images. According to our information, Russia is pretty much ready to give up all of this territory for Ukraine, because they started to construct the new defense lines not far away from Tokmak, on the northern part of it. They also moved significant forces towards Tokmak, including the forces that were used before near to Robotina village. It means that they understand that during this autumn or maybe winter campaign, Ukraine has the ability to reach this very important road. Still judging on the situation in Robotina and Verbova, I do expect the major advancement of Ukrainian army very soon. Plus, we have the Abrams tanks for that stuff. Ukraine admitted that we received those tanks in Ukrainian army, but hesitated to say then Ukraine will use them on the front lines. One of the spokesmen of Ukrainian army said that yet we are out of the main conditions to use those tanks on the front lines, no tactical conditions, he stated. Also, we have the very light advancement of Ukrainian army near to Andreevka, more eastbound to the Russian positions. My friends, before we go to the other news, let me tell you about the partner and also the sponsor of my channel. Yes, it is the Atlas VPN. Why am I constantly telling you about this fantastic VPN service? Because they have the special deal that was made for my subscribers and followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month, plus you'll have 6 months for free, and it is the best offer on the market right now from all of the VPN Premium services. 5 years ago, I lost my Palette Block YouTube channel and I have to restart it. Basically, my device was was hacked. If I would have used Atlas VPN, it won't be happy. So I tried many VPNs since that time, but for Atlas VPN, I trust the most. Also, Atlas VPN grants me the full access to any kind of the series on the Netflix streaming platform. So I don't care about the government restrictions any longer. And sometimes I check the enemy side social media and for that I also use the Atlas VPN. You can basically change your virtual location to any point in the world. And Atlas VPN is so fast that you will never feel the difference whether it's on or off. So now my friends, please check out my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may find the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month plus 6 months for free. This deal is only valid for my followers, so hurry up to join the club. If we check the last update from the other military map resource, you may find that Ukrainian army also propels forward. It was quite an important advancement since Ukraine passed through the Russian defense lines also over here. In the nearby future, I also expect the further advancement of Ukrainian army towards Verboa from this side as well. Meanwhile, Germany postpones the decision to supply the Taurus cruise missiles to Ukraine. Chancellor Scholz personally afraid that Germany will be involved in military conflict with Russian Federation because he is sure that military personnel is required to maintain those missiles in Ukraine. So Germany will have to send the 
other soldiers on Ukrainian territory. That's the main issue for them. By the way, today Russia reported that they destroyed one of the Leopard 2 tanks with the German crew inside. Hmm. Well, finally this milestone will be achieved and Germany will supply cruise missiles to Ukraine. I don't see any kind of the issues with that. And Kanzler Schultz will stop resisting also very soon. Bulgaria confirms that they will supply unserviceable S-300 missiles to Ukrainian army. Ukraine has all the resources to restore those missiles unlike Bulgaria, so we're gonna use them to shut down the Russian cruise missiles and other stuff. Russia begins to create the new railroad that potentially may connect the Rostov Oblast and Mariupol. There is no direct connection and the existing railroad comes very close to the front lines, especially near to Buhledar. So the Russian supplies are under the constant threat of being cut by Ukrainian army. That's why the Buhledar was so important for Ukrainian army and still Russia wants to take it under control but Ukrainian army dig down to the ground out there and now Ukraine is even on offensive operation near to Vuhledar. That's why Russia at least temporarily is unable to get Vuhledar under control. They don't have resources, but they have enough resources to build the new connection, the new supply to Mariupol. Sorry for Cyrillic letters, but we have the map like that. So this is the Mariupol over here. Russia wants to connect it like that across Andreevka. The existing railroad goes like this. The Russian army mostly uses the railroads to move their forces. They're very good in that. But the other way of the transportation usually is terrible for Russia. By the way, we have the confirmation about it. With this aviation accident that happened to the Russian military Illusion 76 in Mali, you may see that this airplane lands very far away from the runway threshold. I'm sure about it and later on I'll tell you. By the way, this is probably the French military transport A400. The French military is still in Mali. So you can see airplane lands. The landing was more or less okay, but on a high speed. How do I know it? Because all of the landing gears touch the runway simultaneously. If you have the lower speed, you have the very nice pitch angle, so you touch down the runway with the main landing gear and next you put the nose gear on the ground. So let's continue with the video. Airplane runs, runs very fast and here we have the end of the runway. So from the place where the airplane touched down the runway, Till the very end of the runway there was not more than 800 meters from what I can see and obviously the airplane just excurted the runway. All of the four reverses are open but it didn't help, the airplane went, excurted the runway, went to the field and crashed after that. So we have the airport chart of the Gawa International Airport of Mali. This is the approximate touchdown point where Illusion 76 touched down the ground. The remaining runway distance is around 1000 meters. Sorry, I was wrong. I thought from the video that it is 800 meters. The runway 06 left was in use. The 06 right is unpaved runway from what I can see. I wouldn't say that 06 left is kind of the long runway. 2500 meters is quite an average runway. Pretty much enough for Illusion 76 to land, but not in a case that the airplane overflown one mile of the runway. It's crazy. And this is the final destination of the airplane. You saw it was the big kaboom with the big kaput. Here we have the photo taken from the other airplane that was on approach to the same runway. You can see the place where the Russian airplane finally stopped. There is the terrain drop, the huge one over here. That is why it crashed finally. Also, there is the wreckage of the car nearby with some of the traces, so the airplane could have hit the car or this vehicle was on board of this Illusion 76 airplane and just separated. It is hard to say what that vehicle was, but judging from this top of the car, it might be the military one. So why did it happen? I think personally because of the Soviet mindset of the commander of this airplane who was flying it and was determined to land at any cost. 
The proper decision would have been just to go around, especially if we saw that all of the engines were working fine, all of the reverses at least were working, that is why it might also have produced the full take of thrust for one more circle and landing. If you are not sure about your landing condition, just go around. It seems like the Russian pilots are unaware about those basic rules that you may study in every flight school from the very beginning. According to some information, there were many of the soldiers on board of this airplane. Yes, this is the cargo airplane, but it has the pressurized cabin, so it may carry lots of the people inside and use as the infantry transport. That is how Russia actually wanted to take Kiev under control. Their main idea was to occupy Gostomel airport and send many of the Illusion 76 airplanes with infantry and other weaponry to Gostomel, which is just 10 kilometers or 6 miles away from the Kiev city. But Ukraine destroyed the runway of Gostomel airport, making it impossible for Russia to use those transport airplanes over there. According to other resources, this airplane was leased by the Wagner PMC to transport their goods and personnel. Officially, Wagner refuses to confirm that information. They say that it was Mali which leased this airplane from the Russian Russian Federation. Well, definitely, the railway transport is much better and safer for the Russian army. The commander of the Russian Black Sea Marine Fleet was shown today in front of the cameras. So again, we have the confirmation that this guy is still alive. He hadn't lost his life and the Russian Navy headquarters building was attacked by the Ukrainian cruise missiles. Definitely the guy is alive and it was the big mistake from the Ukrainian officials telling the information to the public that this guy lost his life. Actually, that information was false and I took it for one of my videos, so sorry my friends, definitely I need to cross-check the information even though it is coming from the official sources of Ukrainian army or Ukrainian intelligence. With misinformation you will never build the trust to your particular media resources. That is why now people will trust less to official resources that are coming from Ukrainian side because they spread already the information that Kadyrov is really desperately sick, he's in coma and they also say about this guy, I took this information, I delivered it to you, so definitely in the future I'll make the remarks saying about that kind of stuff that we shouldn't trust it for now, we should wait for the confirmation for evidence, let's say video or photo. Some of the mainstream media resources reported that Wagner soldiers entered the Bakhmut city again. Again, this information comes from the Ukrainian soldiers who were interviewed by those media resources. The Wagner media resources again are refusing to confirm that their soldiers are taking part in the war in Ukraine. Before, they said that they are out of this war for the long time. The Russian hero came from Ukraine for his reward, the medal. The only issue that he lost his life and he was just photoshopped near to this military officer. Looks real, but actually the Photoshop is quite bad out there. What is interesting that this was published on the local resources of that specific region of Russia. It is so cringy. As you can see, this mesh protection is quite useful against the Lancer drones or FPV drones that our enemy constantly uses against our army vehicles. For example, this is the Krab artillery system that we got from the Polish side. The upper part is totally meshed and still it allows the crew to evacuate because there is the door on the top from this mesh. To some international news, many of the ethnical Armenians are leaving so-called Nagorno-Karabakh for Armenia. They do afraid of Azerbaijan ruling the territory. More than 50,000 civilians already left the so-called Nagorno-Karabakh. Unfortunately, there was the case that many people gathered in a gas station and somehow it burst into flames, taking the lives of more than 125 civilians. That's terrible. Finally, the United States of America introduced the sanctions against the third companies which continue to supply the crucial components for the Shahid drones into Iran. 
We are speaking about the companies from Iran itself, from Hong Kong, from Arab Emirates and from Turkey. Russia uses the similar schemes to produce their drones like Lancet. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also please check out my personal link in the video description just below where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium with a huge discount that was made especially for my followers. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.